Hey everybody, welcome to the show. It's me, your old pal Dan Classic. And today, we're talking about G.I. Joe, specifically the Dreadnoughts. And, and I'll be here to make sure you get it all right. Jesse, what the hell are you wearing? I don't know if I ever mentioned it, but I used to be a Navy SEAL, you know. Yeah, you mention it all the fucking time. But what are you doing here? I'll be making sure you don't get any military facts wrong, Gorilla. <sighs> what are you waiting for, Raz Holly? Hit the music! It's, it's almost like he's like a noodle. In 1982, Hasbro relaunched the G.I. Joe line via an aggressive three-pronged campaign that besides the three and three-quarter inch figures included a brilliant comic book series and an animated series that would be forever remembered as one of the best of the era. So we're just glossing over the 12-inch line. Yep. The better part of two decades, one of the most successful action figure lines of all time. Hell, they invented the word action figure. You're just going to skip it, Gorilla? Yep. Can I go on? Ah, uh, what the f- Anyway, this is the G.I. Joe that I grew up with. Between 1982 and 1994, around 500 figures would be produced. And they were awesome. G.I. Joe, a real American hero, centered around the conflict between Cobra, a terrorist organization bent on taking over the world, and G.I. Joe, an elite special forces group in an ongoing mission to stop them. But there was another group who sometimes worked indirectly with Cobra and sometimes did whatever the hell they wanted. Enter the Dreadnoughts. The Dreadnoughts were always my favorite. Maybe it's because they were a little different, a little obnoxious. They weren't mustache-twirling villains, but they also weren't milk-drinking Boy Scouts either. Look at this ragtag group, Gorilla. Most of them don't even carry guns. That's kind of why I like them, Jess. They're different. They still have weapons, chainsaws, blowtorches, whatever the fuck this is supposed to be. That's so unrealistic. Hey, wait a minute. Did the fanboy put you up to this? What? No. Yeah, right. I smell a conspiracy. Hey, that's my gimmick. 1984 saw the launch of one of my favorite figure lines of all time, the LJN Wrestling Superstars. And Hasbro, already two years deep into the Real American Hero line, introduced one of my favorite characters in the line and the leader of the Dreadnoughts, Zartan. Zartan was sold exclusively with the Chameleon Swamp Skier. More on that later. So let's take a closer look at Zartan. Here's the file card. These were one of the things that made the three and three quarter inch Joes so cool. Everybody came with one, and even if you never saw the guy on the TV show, you got a good idea of who he was and what he was about. On the file card it says Master of Disguise, code name Zartan, file name unknown, aliases too numerous to list, birthplace also unknown. Gotta love this, it gives Zartan an air of mystery, leaving the audience to fill in the blank. But here is where it also gets a little shaky. Zartan can alter his skin color at will to blend in with his environment. More on that in a minute. He is a master of makeup and disguise, right? A ventriloquist, a linguist, wait just a fucking minute here. A ventriloquist? A fucking ventriloquist. I know what they're getting at. He can throw his voice, but using ventriloquist makes him sound like some dipshit on a stage talking to a puppet which doesn't jibe with the mysterious mercenary with no name persona. It makes him sound like a vaudeville... vaudevillain? No, vaudevillian? Anyway, it sounds stupid. 
It goes on to say he's a master of over 20 different languages and dialects. Awesome. An acrobatic contortionist? So is he a stage actor or something? Oh, oh, and a practitioner of several mystic martial arts. Name one mystic martial art. One. I'll wait. That's what I thought. Very little is known about his background and origins, but most security agencies agree that he must have had European military academy training, probably St. Cyr. Well, sure, as long as St. Cyr has a performance arts program. You know what? Forget what I said about file cards being cool. Fuck this file card. Let's look at why Zartan is one of my favorites. The figure. This is the Chameleon Swamp Skier. It is uh, what Zartan came with. It is pretty cool. It's like a little jet ski. He can ride on it. So if you grab Zartan here, kind of on it like this. And, you know, he fits kind of okay. He has to lay down to be on it. And you can get his hands on the, on the thing there. And, and he can kind of ride it around. Um, so yeah, there's that. It, I mean, it looks actually a lot cooler kind of by itself or if he's just sort of hanging out, you know, smoking a butt on the, on the thing, you know, <laughs> at the docks. <laughs> it's pretty cool, but, uh, but yeah, it also comes with this, this little trailer, um, and it has this hitch, and I guess he can drag it along because you can attach these bottom skis here to the bottom part here, and you can break the whole thing down and stick it in this box. I don't know why you would, um, but it's it's kind of a neat thing. You can just kind of put junk in it, and it looks like you, know, you could tow it behind it or whatever. Um, it's an early accessory or early vehicle, and it's kind of cool, um, but the main event really here is Zartan. So here he is, Zartan from 1984. And he's actually in really, really good condition considering how old this figure is. He's got the basic articulation for uh, G.I. Joes of the time. You know, you got the shoulders that go all the way around. He's got the swivel arm. Um, he's got, you know, the, the kung fu grip or whatever you call it. Um, his head doesn't really move because he's got this awesome hood on. Um, and he's got some accessories with him as well. Um, check this out. He's got these two thigh pads. They're removable. Um, generally when you find these online, these are missing. A lot of times this chest piece is missing as well. And another cool feature about him, <laughs> not that that losing shit is cool, but another cool feature about him is that he can change color in the sun. Now, I tried to do this earlier today a couple times, and while I can see it just fine in real life, on the viewfinder, it doesn't really pick it up. He turns kind of a grayish color. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm going to put the pictures up and see if you can take a look and see what it looks like he also comes with this laser and get a good view of it it's very tiny I almost lost it a couple times and it's pretty great so there's that also he comes with this backpack which goes into his little peg hole um, it makes it almost impossible for him to stand up without it um so there's that <laughs> but but inside you've got a mask for zartan to wear it actually fits on his face and it makes him look kind of like like uh well you know that guy from that story <laughs> This figure in particular is in very good condition. Um, he's got very little uh, paint loss, if any at all. He has very stiff, nice joints and uh, all of his accessories with him. The only thing that he is missing are the color changing stickers.
This figure in particular was discontinued in 1986. The Dreadnoughts would fill out the ranks over the next seven years before we saw Zartan in the line again, in 1993 as part of the much maligned Ninja Force subset. The Ninja Force figs were numbered and Zartan was number two. And they hit the nail right on the head with that. Let's take a look at this version of Zartan's file card and see what's up. So the bulk of the info on the card is the same as before, with the exception of a few things. It's a sickening shade of pink, and look at this mug. Duh, I'm Zartan, I'm a ninja. Duh. Oh, all that and a quote as well? My personality changes as often as my looks, and they're both bad. Duh, I'm Zartan. Well, let's get this over with and take a look at a physical example of the G.I. Joe line jumping the shark. So here he is, Ninja Force Zartan. With his very ninja-like bright fucking orange weapons. Well, at least they match his stupid fucking haircut. Gotta love that spring-loaded swivel action thing he does like He-Man or some shit. There's something about him that's familiar. Hmm. Oh shit, I knew it! This is Whispering Willy from 1986. Willy is part of the core line by Lennard, who, by the way, have been producing three and three quarter inch military figures since the mid 80s, getting their start only a few years after Hasbro started the real American hero line. Anyway, it's blatantly obvious that Whispering Willy was the inspiration for the abomination that is Ninja Force Zartan. Now wait just a minute, we need to take a look at Whispering Willy. What the fuck is up with this figure? Like, where are his pants? Why is he called Whispering Willy anyway? Why is he whispering? And to whom? I'm watching I'm you. Watching. Let's get the fuck away from all this and move on to the last figure we'll be looking at today. Here is Zartan version 7. Looks like we're back to a more or less traditional look here, but what's up with that deep V? Maybe some chest hair and a medallion would have gone nicely with this one. Anyhow, he's got a removable hood revealing his tiny bald head. There's a reason for that, but it makes him look kind of stupid. He doesn't change color in the sun, so there's that. Let's look at the accessories. He's got a pistol. Okay, not sure what was wrong with the laser, but fine. He also has what appears to be a hybrid rifle slash shotgun. I'm not a gun guy, so sue me. And this huge bag that makes him look like he's on his way to the fucking airport. What's in the bag? Well, the head of his victims, of course. Actually, these are an updated version of the disguise mask that Zartan version 1 came with. They're a bit better than they were almost 20 years previously. You got this one with a beret and this blonde fellow. All in all, this figure isn't terrible, but I would still take the original over any of the 22 other versions of Zartan in the 3 and 3 quarter inch line. Well, Jess, that's it. And in the next episode, we'll be talking about the Dreadnoughts from 1985. Yeah, since Dan is too much of a cheapskate to get the other 19 versions of Zartan. You're damn right I am, Jess. You have anything else to add? Yeah, I do. Raz Holly, hit the music. Mother.